mild steel and stainless and aluminum uh, and with a spool gun aluminum is probably the easiest welding I think there is. It's just a matter of getting the gun and heat and wire speed all set up. I love it when there's a spider crawling around inside my hood. Come on guy, freaking me out. There you go. So don't be afraid of it. My rig costs less than a thousand dollars to buy used and cobbled together but still under a thousand. Now the canopy is going to be built out of this pipe and we want to join them together so we cut what's called a bird mouth using the bandsaw and it's just two cuts as you can see and it's not a fantastic fit you know you might want something prettier if you're going to use TIG but for MIG that's plenty good. Now the angle that you use is going to depend upon the two pipes coming together you know a larger pipe is going to need a different angle on it so it just putts around with it and I keep one from the last time I did it and just use that as a starting point. So these inch and a half Schedule 40 aluminum pipes are 20 feet long. You can sometimes get them 24, but I need 16 feet and 12 feet in the other direction. I could stack them on top of each other. You're not doing this instead of this and then going on, but putting them into each other like this, it not only looks cool, but it lets me use up that scrap stuff too. Now this is an Aluma cut disc. You can't use it before you weld because it's loaded with oil, but man does it cut fast. You see it doesn't get clogged up. And then a flap disc or one of these to polish it up. This is a dimide clamp. Wonderful little tool. Now it comes with a shaft that you can just lock your impact to. Wonderful thing. So if you got to be clamping and unclamping stuff all day long, that's the way to go with it. But it also has a lot of gripping force so it holds down something like this. Mm. Now what I did is I marked the pipe off every foot and I snug it up and then I count the strokes. In fact this is two and a half. First time it was three and this time it's two and a half. And you just go down and, you know, don't always hit the same mark. I've moved six inches off on in the second pass because it will become more obvious if you don't as to where the bend points are. But you can do a pretty good, accurate job with just this cheap Harbor Freight pipe bender. If you want prettier than that, then okay. Take it to a shop and they can put it on a pipe roller and that'll get it really nice. Some people will tell you to put sand in it, but this is a really big pipe and yeah, it's not worth it. Okay, I think that will do. Once I get one done, and it's just a matter of matching the rest of them to this one. If I like this in shape. And I do. That's my shape, so that's my pattern. Now I just gotta bend the rest of them to match that one. And if you overdo it in one little spot, you can put it in upside down and undo it a little bit. So you can see the gap is biggest right here. So I find the middle of that. That's where I need a little bit more bend. Need to 
unbend a little bit there. A little more right here. Good. One more. Hey, you could build one of these with a pipe or something here, but duct tape works all right. The most difficult thing you got to do here is turn a sanding belt inside out. Then if this trick doesn't work, increase the diameter of your spindle here and you'll get build up a little more friction there. You need more friction on the drill than you have on the pipe. There we go. And when you get tired of doing it with your hand, get a block of wood with a hole drilled in it. And that one didn't go all the way through, which is kind of nice. It didn't rub against my hand that way. And you're in business. And I'm using 120 grit. You can get uh, finer grit, of course, and leave a finer finish, but that is beautiful for what we're doing. And before you get too excited, this process doesn't work when it's a handrail because there's something coming out that attaches to the pipe. You can't slide the belt down. Uh, if you got that situation, you can cut the belt and then tape the belt back together, but you gotta do it between whatever the sustanchions are that are holding the pipe, so it becomes a pain in the ass. They make tools that do that but that just means you forgot to sand it before you welded it together, didn't it? Now my duct tape's holding up okay, but you could make this out of wood and, uh, you know, really rough wood, and that would uh, help a lot too. Or you could make a larger diameter, as long as it's a larger diameter, it has more surface area, more friction here than on the pipe, so it won't slip. Now this is one of the arch pipes, so we got the advantage that we only have to sand the side that's going to be down that you can see, but you can also see that every place where we put a little bend into it, the sanding belt can't reach into that. So if you're totally anal, you can get one of these brushes and cover that up. Hides it pretty good. Just a piece of sandpaper does a pretty good job too. Now, if it's just a little bit off, like it is right here, this pipe is leaning that way. If you weld on this side, the weld always shrinks and it will pull the pipe this way. So I can probably correct a little bit by just giving it a nice hot weld right there. That came in a little too much, actually. Eighth inch too much, which is. Just weld the other side, you go back a bit. I'm off by a sixteenth. That we can live with. Now I'm leveling this to my floor, which will give it some air too. And I don't think I'll get it perfect until I get it up. And then I may have to cut one and readjust it or heat it and bend it. But I want to get it as straight as I can right now. The trick is when you set it down, it'll be one side that contacts first when it's uh, vertical by your level or your square or whatever you're using. Put your first tack where it's touching and then you can use that as a hinge because I need to pull this back toward me a little bit here. And that will give it the ability to flex on this side because it has a gap. And that tack, if you don't bend it too much, will just act like a hinge and not break. 
And that's about it. Then put your next tack in and do it all over again. Slow and sure. So every tack you put in will start pulling it off to the side. And it'll be less and less as you go along, but we'll have less chance of correcting it too. So now these go that way. Get a gentle bend. See if I got it. Yeah, and I did. So now <laughs> a little too much. So I'm gonna put my next tack back over here because I know it'll pull it this way. So. Keep going around, do it slowly. Once you got eight tacks in or so, you'll be ready to start making some bigger welds. And then, like I said, you can also heat them up. Yeah, right now it's just playing seesaw. And we can make sure that the gap at the bottom is the same as the top. Oh, yeah, spot on. And then most importantly, don't get into a rush because you want it to cool down between the wells. First off, aluminum, when it gets too hot, you'll blow right through it. And secondly, the most importantly, you want it to cool down so it, the, the, any distortion works out of it. You get more distortion the hotter it is when you weld. So let it be cool. Yes. Think about where we want the next one. Okay, concrete is done, and a lot of people hire this work, but that really, this is uh, four yards of concrete, and it doesn't take that much. A couple of buddies and some tools from the rental company, and you're in business. using stainless steel screws. Okay, these butt joint things, put the long side down. That way when you put the next sheet on, you can rest it on this little ledge right here and then pop that open and slide it under and screw the sheet down first in the middle and uh, then the next one will get pushed on. You gotta have it kind of rigid. If I did it again, I think I'd start with the two sheets in the center here and then work my way out. But it's only 16 feet, there's only four sheets. So not that big a deal. And this is six millimeter 
polycarbonate multi wall and it's just two walls they make them where they're stacked more and you don't have to worry it bends fine even in this direction which is a stiffer direction so i could even have more arch in this roof and it'd be fine this is the tricky part get it up on there and get it started in at one side goes and then wiggle oh, that went in way too easy of course it's the last one right Okay, I like this better. I raised it up about a foot by blocking up on that ladder. Something about that shape just I like better. It's gonna be more work though, because I gotta cut these posts off to that angle. I think I saw it slip. I think it did. I think it slipped. Oh, please don't fall. Yeah, it's just a matter of going slow enough that I don't melt the plastic. <laughs> 